Welcome back to the Forensics Detail channel. I'm here with a special guest that you may have seen on the channel before, but if you're new, you may not have seen this guy, but but yes, yeah, that's it. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bert. Um, I'm the editor of Pro Detailer magazine. Uh, we've been doing it for about five years now, um, and so yeah. That's... Yeah. So the key thing is Pro Detailers magazine volume eleven is out. We're going to talk a little bit more about this magazine specifically and what Bert does. So should we start with the magazine? Yeah, why not? That's a good place to start. Okie dokie. So Pro Detailers. I was I've been involved with Pro Detailers on the channel for for many years, and they do these fantastic mega tests, which is at the heart of the magazine, where they'll do um, take a particular area of detailing in this month's mm -hmm. magazine. It's compounds, so testing heavy cutting compounds, and then providing some recommendations based on the performance and the testing. Um, but you've done that for virtually every genre of detailing products so far now. Well, it's interesting. I mean, our very first one kicked off where we sent out samples. We sent out something like 600 sample bottles to, to, to people mm. um, and uh, asked them for their feedback. And we did them blind testing, so it just had a QR code on. Uh, that kind of didn't work out so brilliantly, but the idea of the mega test has always been to do more than whatever's been done before in a particular genre. So, for example, we haven't done ceramic coatings yet, but mm. you know, lots of people have put, say, 20, like yourself really, put 20 or 30 ceramic coatings on a bonnet and been sort of throwing various bits of abuse at it and seeing which ones survive. Our aim is always to take any other test that's been done on a genre and push it that much yeah, further. Ceramic coatings would be a great one, actually, wouldn't it? That would be a great one. And yes and no. It's, it's very intimidating. It's very, you know, if we're doing, so we did uh, trim dressings in issue, was it nine? I think we did trim dressings. It's the last volume, yeah. Um, oh, so we've got nine and ten here. And that was fascinating because we bought some old trims um, and we have a lovely row point machine. And we went to row point together. Um, and uh, we broke down on the way home, didn't we? We did. So did the car. That's two and years ago. <laughs> yeah, it was. God. And um, so that we've got that Gonio photo meter. Yeah. Uh, and that was great because we put the dressings on the uh, plastic. We could take the readings and we, we always try and do a scientific approach. So we would take a control. We would take five or six different readings. We always would always do it that way round and then create an average. And then you've got your scores. Mm. Um, but with something like ceramic coating, it's quite difficult because how do you rate what a good coating is and what isn't? Is it to do with ease of application? Is it to do with durability? I mean, how do you qualify beads? Yeah. You've got one person saying, oh, that's great beading, and another person saying, no, I prefer that beading. Well, that's way too subjective. Does it make a good product just because it beads and all that? Yeah. It's defining the test criteria is always difficult and as well. that's why it? ceramic coatings is difficult. Yeah. So um, the most recent one we did is probably our most ambitious was in issue 11, the most recent, and that was on heavy cut compound. So we went to all the big players in the in the compound world and, and dropped them an email, but it was mid COVID, so we didn't get very you know a huge response. Unfortunately, there are quite a few big players who we would have loved to have in here, but we don't. Um, gave them a brief and said, send us the products that uh, you know the pad and the compound, which would suit uh, rotary application. And uh, then we used a sort of a system of weights and pulleys and measures and stop clocks and, and um, gloss meter uh, and paint depth meters and all sorts to come up with a scientific way of testing these, these compounds. And then we also had a couple of cars uh, that we tried them on kind of subjectively. So we always try and have a scientific part of the test, which is great. But then we've often found that our favorite products don't don't always tally up with the ones that win the yeah, science I've side that as well yeah um, so it's kind of that intangible I mean yeah. it's like I don't know I've, as some of you may have seen if you've been watching the videos on our channel or on um, any other place that we appear I've got a thing for Subarus it's irrational sure, because yeah. I mean for example James his colleague has got an idea he's got his thing is for BMWs which are admittedly superior vehicles but give me a Subaru over a Beamer any day of the week oh, you're a BMW itis aren't you as I well? am yeah, yeah. yes and um, <laughs> the, <laughs> sorry um, but it, it is that intangible and so we try and blend the the subjective and the objective the quantitative and the qualitative in the mega tests um, and but it's, but it's worth saying this is just one element of the yeah. magazine so that you get some of the best tests that are done on the products and whatever they're featuring they are fantastic tests but that's one thing in the magazine 
Uh, some of the other things that I get a lot of value out of is the new product side. So every time a magazine is issued, there's a whole range of new products and there's a big hunger from lots of people to see what's new to the market. So if you're trying to keep up with the detailing industry as well, guys, be aware of the uh, new product section in the magazine. And what else? I mean, you, you were on the road in this, in this issue, weren't you? Yeah, well, we've got, so we always kick off with the news section, which is an A to Z of news. Well, normally it's an A to Z. In fact, the very first few times we couldn't find any news beginning with V and stuff like that, so we struggled. But we have recently uh, managed to get the full 26 news stories on a big sort of DPS double page spread. Uh, then we go to Car Care Adventures. So bear in mind that we all have full-time jobs, some of us multiple full-time jobs, in, in mostly in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but we take time out as we can for magazine adventures, car care adventures. And this time, uh, we uh, the big one, so to speak, was going down to Milan to uh, in Italy to see uh, the Mafra factory. Now, Mafra is a huge, huge Italian company. Think yeah. of it. Auto glim, but uh, kind of bigger, basically. Yeah. And the Italians, you know, they are masters of manufacturing. Um, and we get the likes of Rupert and stuff from Italy. You know, they're, they're a big deal in, in detailing. Yeah. And Mafra have bought out a new high-end brand. Um, and it's kind of difficult to think what the comparison is. Kind of, is it Infinity to Nissan or Lexus to Toyota? I don't know. <laughs> but it's, um, it's called Labo Cosmetica. I'm sure you'll have heard of it or hashtag Labo Cosmetica. Not using the hashtag, um, and it's a really interesting new brand. It is interesting. We were talking about this earlier on, guys. One of the things is the product line in the Labco mm. Cosmetica range. It's got some unique things in there around, rather than just a pH neutral shampoo that lots of brands offer to make, maintain or not strip old forms of protection product. They take a different approach, don't they? Yeah, with the their three pH system. Yeah, which is something that you'd definitely be interested in if you've got coatings on your car as well. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to say a little bit about those? Oh, well, I mean, they do their own coatings, and, and actually this is an interesting thing. They have a range of coatings which have got different properties for chemical and physical protection, and they actually kind of brew them in-house, which I know many people say they do, but uh, in terms of actually Europeans who make coatings... They, they really do. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't that many of them. Um, and so for these coatings, I've created this 3pH wash system, uh, which is including kind of pre-wash side of things, and the idea is that you're hitting with an acid and alkaline uh, and then a kind of a more neutral detergent side of things to get rid of all the different types of contamination because in order to get rid of a, a broad range of contamination you need a broad range of in brackets solvents yeah. to to remove the different substrates they're not actually solvent but that's so you could use these purifying type products not as maintenance products every week but you might use this acidic shampoo once a year or something like that to, to bring back the, the uh, performance of the, the yeah. protection product. The in vogue thing is kind of to almost exfoliate or to open the pores or whatever, that, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, the idea is essentially to bring back the hydrophobic performance, um, particularly of the, of the top layers. And um, it's, it's effective. To be honest, they're not the first manufacturer to do that. If you look at various other coating manufacturers, they've had slightly acidic shampoos for a while, but it hasn't been marketed as that because yeah, yeah. the vogue was everything has to be pH neutral because if anything's over, you know, anything is, is not acid, is uh, not neutral, then you're going to destroy everything and your and wax is going to fall it's, off. And it's important as well because this way you're finding about some of the new brands that are bringing out stuff which is different as well and you're you're featuring lots of kind of um, stuff within the industry as well so if you're yeah. if you're interested in following detailing and what all the new developments are as well as the new products but as the new brands that are coming through mm. so that's another side to the magazine and the international element to the brand so we've got um, for example shiny garage which is a Polish brand Tenzi is another Polish brand yeah uh, obviously there's the Italians the Germans very strong force and you, you get a different flavor of products from the different regions so if you yeah. know it's a Polish made product it's going to be a different flavour, perhaps, of raw materials used and stuff like that. We don't actually encourage tasting, but, but um, <laughs> it, is, it is definitely, if you said, there's a, sort of a certain bitterness. Um, so that's the product side. And we also do a hardware side, which is uh, yeah. a sort of thing we've been doing, I think, the last four issues or so. And so in this issue, we test cordless vacuum cleaners. So uh, we have Flex, who have one that kind of has a little strappy ratchet thing. So I really like that. I love that machine. Interesting piece of kit, and it blows as well as it sucks. It does, and it's got quite a bit of grunt for a cordless it's 300 machine. watt or so. It's not but bad, is it? But again, see, this is why we try to go in a bit more depth of these things, because when you say 300 watts in a Hoover, you get lots of people go, oh, that's nothing, I've got 1200 watts, I've got 2400, well, technically. Um, cordless power, so to speak. 
um, doesn't translate to the same suction power yeah. as, as mains power, as AC, because you're using brushless DC motors, you're using lithium batteries that are able to provide pretty serious currents. So we try to go into a bit more technical detail than, than any kind of other mainstream source. Yeah, and you um, compared them with another one. I haven't read this yeah. article yet, but I'm interested in results because I thought the Flex one had loads of grunt, it was good. You've also reviewed a new tool out that I would need to get my hands on. I'll speak to you about this afterwards. The I UDOS. Ah, so yeah. that's a, this is a new polishing machine that's in there as well. It is indeed. So you've got Lake Country who have been making pads for ages and they're, they're you know, very well respected. Then you've got LC Manufacturing. So it's just two separate companies. It's a family run company, but it's kind of divided into two things. The latter company has been developing the UDOS uh, for years. We've been following it in the mag because I really love it, it just in terms of its concept. Yeah. Um, it's unique, isn't it? Well, it is. And we heard along the grapevine that uh, Kelly Harris, KDS Caltech down in Gillingham in Kent, um, he has, uh, he's been working as a kind of consultant, I think, for quite a while for LC, but now he's kind of be full blown, it's kind of big news, as he's going to be uh, So he's been testing it as well, kind of. He's been testing it. exactly that. And cool. We heard the first one in the UK. But, but was, what is it, Bert? That's the key thing. Oh. What does it do? I don't know, it makes a noise, well around. Uh, no, it is a polishing machine, but it's a bit different from that. It is a um, multi-movement polishing machine. So there have been others. Uh, we tested one in issue five, I think, which was uh, a DA or forced rotation, or it might have been rotary and forced rotation. Anyway, this one does many things. This is a rotary. It is a three mil, which they call a sanding movement. And then it's a nine mil, a 12 mil, and a 15 mil and even a 21 mil. So it's, it's got lots of different motions. One of those is wrong because so it doesn't- variable really. orbit size. Variable so. orbit size, free spinning and rotary, but not false rotation. Mm. All um, the way through to no orbit, okay, yeah. rotary. Yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is interesting because it, as well as introducing the orbit, you've got to introduce the free spinning element when it goes into a DA mode. So it's not an easy machine to engineer. No, and it is, and engineer is the right word. It does feel very engineered. It's quite heavy. Um, and But the whole concept is you suddenly don't need to go out and buy 20 different machines. Yeah. You've, you've got it all in one. Now, at the moment, this nascent stage, when we do a full, full write-up in there, we feel that it's a very clever, well-engineered piece of kit. We are looking forward to the Gen 2 versions. We're looking forward to further evolution of it. Is it available in the UK yet? It's not, is it? Is uh, it's not, coming? It was supposed to start shipping in September in the US, and then we were supposed to get it a month or two later. As far as I know, I've seen some pictures of manufacturing uh, happening at the moment. So with the whole COVID thing with jiggles, uh, slow down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, moment, yeah. But it, it will come to the issue fairly soon. Cool. Uh, so watch this space for a new polisher, guys. And if you want to find more about it, then it is in the magazine. There is another thing in this magazine, guys. From doing the YouTube channel, there's a lot of there's a lot of people with a lot of questions. Um, and this magazine also does how-tos to solve some of those questions. So what have we got in this um, month's magazine? Uh, this month we've got a couple of things. Uh, we've got, for example, how to remove watermarks. Watermarks are often misunderstood. Uh, and as there are more coated cars out there, watermarks become more and more yeah. kind of relevant. One of the biggest problems that is, and that's one of the biggest questions I get asked. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. understand the chemistry behind it. That's, that's the yeah. key is, you know, what is a watermark? What how is to do it deposit? properly, how to do it properly. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people turn to abrasions, don't they, by default. Um, when it might not be the right way, there might be ways of getting it out there chemically um, without, you know, because if you're using abrasives, you might be tearing through your product potentially or stripping yeah. your product. So, yeah, so that's removing your clear coat. So that's a great one. I haven't read the full magazine yet, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna be reading that one as well, guys. I might even be able to answer the questions properly when someone asks me now. Um, <laughs> uh, what else is in there? Tree sap, for example. Yeah. So again, what's interesting about tree sap is people have a general approach. Oh, you clay bar trees. That's really yeah. done. Well, actually, there's lots of different types of tree sap yeah. out there. And from a chemical point of view, you need to take lots of different approaches to yeah. it. So uh, we've got a big, again, a DPS double page spread uh, that covers the different types of tree yeah. sap and how you should approach them. And bear in mind, when we're writing these articles, first of all, they're written by detailers, but we consult a lot with chemists, with specialists in their field. Yeah. Um, and again, it's like with the trader talk section, which is designed for people who are uh, either a professional valeter detailer or somebody who wants to become one, or indeed, frankly, is running their own small owner operator business. A lot of it's relevant stuff. Yes. And that is um, that section as well. We talk to specialists, say an insurance specialist or a finance specialist or SEO specialist when you're doing marketing. We've got a big uh, double end sort of photography guide in this as well, because photography is close to my heart as well. 
And uh, so we've got a guide on using Lightroom and uh, I think 11, well, 10 tips that turn into 11 tips on how to take cool still photos of your wonderful detailing work. Fantastic. So there, guys, that is a glimpse into what this magazine do. I was involved with this magazine from issue one, doing yeah. the grind testing. Um, That's how we with, met with Bert. It was. It, that's yeah. how he we says he was grind it, wasn't it? <laughs> And now we are all the way through to uh, volume 11. I've seen how the magazine's evolved and we've been talking about it today and it is fantastic guys. So thank you very much to Bert for giving us some of your time to go through what's in there. Um, I'll put a link in the description for where you can get the magazine. It can be subscription based or you can just buy this copy if you want. All the information will be in there. So thank you very much for watching. What I'd like to do just before we leave you is ask, uh, we, we run on Facebook and Insta and YouTube, but ask for feedback in terms of what you guys would like to see in the mag. We, we rely, we've got an Ask Alan question, for example, Alan of AMD yeah. Details, he answers five, six questions each issue. So if you've got detailing questions that you'd like to pose to us that we yeah. can then answer in print, um, you know, comment below on John's video here. I'll be obviously watching and yeah. crying. And so you can actually influence what's going into the magazine yeah. for the next issue, guys, which is fantastic. And if it's a good question, we might not just answer the question, we might do an article on it. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's all about being reactive. I mean, the very first issues were, were we created it by mistake, to be honest. It was supposed to be a free handout at, at Waxstock, at the inaugural Waxstock, but um, not the inaugural, actually, 2015 Waxstock. But the, um, then people started wanting more and more and more, and so it's grown. So this one, for example, is 132 pages. Which is big, isn't it? It's yeah. really big. It yeah. um, takes a lot of writing. But at the same time, uh, we're really enjoying how there is a kind of a two-way line, really, using modern technology and computers and all of that kind of yeah. electricity stuff, um, and then combining that with nice old-school print that you can read on the throne and never run out of battery. Fantastic. Okie dokie. So guys, we'll put all the information in there and do not forget if you've got any questions or you want those articles, put in the comments and check out Bert's social media stuff as well. And pro detailers are also on YouTube. Let's not forget that. So there's the pro detailers Detail magazine. magazine. Is That's the name of the channel and I'll put that in the description as well. Nice. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, take care and thank you Bert. Thank you. Thank you.